rickets and osteomalacia. These are the diseases where the organic matrix, mainly the collagen, fails to procalcify properly. And due to this, there are large osteoid seams that remains. Both the conditions are due to the deficiency of vitamin D or whenever there is a disturbance in the metabolism of the vitamin D which might be secondary to the any renal disease. Now, let's talk about the manifestation. Manifestation of these two diseases, rickets and osteomalacia, are only different, different with the respect of age. Rickets occur in children and osteomalacia in adults. Vitamin D and its metabolism. It is very important to know how does the metabolism of vitamin D occurs in our body. Vitamin D, which is cholecalciferol, is derived either directly from the diet, from the food that we take, or indirectly by the action of ultraviolet radiations which we get from the sun on the 7D hydrocholesterol uh, which is present in our skin. Now this vitamin D is inactive until hydroxylated. Now this process of hydroxylation occurs in two steps in two different organs of the body. The first step takes place in the liver. Now this first step of hydroxylation in the liver converts the cholecalciferol into 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol. The second steps of hydroxylation occurs in the kidney in which the 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol converts into 125 dihydroxy cholecalciferol. Now this 125 dihydroxylated form is an active form of vitamin D. And that is, this stimulates the intestinal absorption of calcium and it also acts on the bones of our body. Now for this all the process, the enzyme responsible is mainly the parathyroid hormone. So this is how the metabolism of vitamin D occurs in our body. Rickets. Rickett is a disease of a growing skeleton it is, and it is mainly characterized by the failure of the normal mineralization of the bone. It is seen mainly at the growth plate and this result in the softening of the bone and the development of deformities. As you can see here in images, different clinical features which we will be discussing in detail. So let's discuss the types of rickets. Rickets is of two types, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 mainly occur due to the deficiency of vitamin D. Now this deficiency could be dietary. If there is a malnutrition, if the intake of vitamin D is less in our diet or if there is any disease that leads to the less absorption of vitamin D in the body or the less, less exposure to the sunlight. Second is uh, due to the disturbance in the vitamin D metabolism as we have already discussed how the metabolism of the vitamin D takes place. Now any disturbance in its metabolism whether due to any uh, renal disease, whether due to any uh, hepatic disease that will lead to the deficiency of vitamin D in the body. Now when we talk about the type 2 rickets, there is a defective absorption of phosphates. Now as we all know that phosphate is essential for the normal formation of bone and teeth and there is an important link between the vitamin D and phosphate. Vitamin D helps uh, the in small intestine and kidney to absorb phosphates back into the bloodstream. So whenever there is a lack of vitamin D, it will reduce or it will decrease the phosphate in our blood. So defective absorption of phosphate through renal tubules will lead to the uh, rickets. And whenever there is a diminished intake or absorption or of the phosphate also will affect the vitamin D in our body and leads to the development of a condition like rickets. Usually, nutritional rickets occur in children in about one year of age and it may occur in older children with a malabsorption syndrome. Now, clinical features of rickets are very important. The very first is the craniotapes. Now this craniotape is actually occurs in young adults. Whenever we apply pressure over the soft membranous bone of the skull, we will get a feeling of a ping pong ball. Uh, which is being compressed and released. As you can see here in the image that how this finger when we apply to the skull of the baby it, it act like a ping pong ball. The head is like act like a ping pong ball. So if the fentanyl remain open even after the two years of age. 
The second feature is the bossing of the skull. Now this bossing of the frontal and the parietal bones become very evident at the age of six months is fine. As you can see that uh, there is a kyphotic hump even in a very young age. Just see the kyphotic deformity here and see the hump here. It is so sharp and pronounced and sometimes uh, when we get the MRI or the x-ray done, you will see structures might get affected due to the sharp kyphotic hump. Uh, if we talk about the chest, there are three features that are prominent in the chest. The first is a pigeon chest. The pigeon chest is a condition where there is a the, uh, the prominence of a sternum, where the sternum become prominent. The next feature is the hericon sulcus. In hericon sulcus, there is a horizontal uh, depression along the lower part of the chest and this corresponds to the insertion of the diaphragm. The last one are the rickettsia rosary. These rickettsia rosary means the osteochondral junction on the anterior chest wall become prominent. As you can uh, see here, how prominent these costochondral junctions and this gives a appearance of a rosary. That's why the name the rickettsia rosary. Now the abdominal changes, pot's belly is a very pronounced feature. Now in pot's belly, what happens? The child's abdomen uh, become protuberant uh, because of the marked muscular hypotonia and lumbar lordosis. Now, now uh, there will be other deformities which will you will see in the upper limb or in the lower limb. Now uh, you will see especially in the upper limb and sometimes in the lower limb also the broadening of the ends of the long bones. Now these uh, especially in the region of the wrist at the lower end of the tibia and fibula. Here also you can see around the wrist and also in the lower extremity here. So there is a broadening or the widening of the epiphysis in the region of the wrist and ankle. In the lower limb, there are other conditions that we see. The first is a coxa vera. Coxa vera is a condition where the angle between the neck and the shaft of the femur uh, gets changed. Normally it is around 130, but uh, uh, because of this rickets, the angle gets changed and it reduces to around 105 to 106 degree. Genu velgum and genu verum is a very common deformity of the long bone and genu velgum or genu velgum which we also call them as knock knee or the bow lag. It's a common presentation when the child starts walking. Other than that, windswept deformity is occasionally seen. As you can see here, it is a unilateral windswept deformity. It is a bilateral windswept deformity. Flat feet is also seen. There is a reduction in the size of pelvis in the children suffering from uh, rickets. So overall, if you'll see the child, overall, if you see the picture of a child, you'll see that the child looks very weak, sick. There is a stunnedness in the growth and the child often uh, is irritable. The radiological features. Early changes are observed in the lower end of the radius and ulna. As we have seen in the, in the lower end of the radius of ulna, there are changes in the epiphysis. There is widening of the epiphysis. Uh, so, uh, you will see that there is a delayed appearance of epiphysis, there is widening of the epiphyseal plate, okay, you can appreciate here in the region of the epiphysis and the shape of the epiphysis. Other than that, there is a cupping of the metaphysis. Now, cupping of the metaphysis means that the overall shape of the metaphysis is more like a cup. You will see that the shape of the metaphysis gets changed. The metaphyses end appear irregular. The cartilage cells appear in this region and it creates a depth in the soft metaphyses and gives a rise of a cupped shape appearance. The next feature is the splaying of the metaphyses. The ends of the metaphyses is, is splayed. Here is a splaying of the metaphyses. These are uh, the edges, these margins are splayed because the, of the pressure of the cartilage cells that accumulate in this region of growth plate. Other than that, there are other bone deformities that we often see. Other bone deformities like where we have already discussed the knock knee, the bow leg. Treatment. So first is a medical treatment. The very first thing is the high dose of vitamin D and calcium supplements. This is the paramount of the treatment. Other than that, orthopedic treatment which includes the conservative methods like splints and POP cast primarily prevent the formation of deformities and if the deformities develop then to correct those deformities 
Now, other than that operative method, it is for the correction of mild to moderate deformities. Osteomalacia. Osteomalacia is a disorder of the bone softening in adults and it is an adult counterpart of rickets. It is due to the prolonged deficiency of vitamin D, so the bones become soft. This deficiency result in the failure of the bone mineralization. As we all know, due to the deficiency of the vitamin D, there is decreased absorption of calcium in the body and also of the phosphate, which, was, which leads to the soft osteoid tissue. Now, these osteoid tissue, as they are soft, because osteoid is a protein which is released by the osteoblast, which gets mineralized when the calcium deposits on it. Now, because of the deficiency of vitamin D, there is a less calcium in the body. So the osteoid remains soft, which will lead to the softening of the bone in the body. So as I have already told you that this is an adult counterpart of rickets, which results in children. Clinical feature. The very first is a bone pain. Patient complains that there is a pain all over in the body. The bone pain is uh, of diffuse kind. The patient uh, pain ranges from the backache to a simple diffuse pain. Uh, bone become tender. There is muscular weakness. Patient feel very weak and it may be difficult for the patient to climb up and down the stairs. Sometimes you will notice that there is a waddling gait due to the weakness or the pain. And patient will also complain of the spasm. There is a twitching in the muscles. Uh, sometimes patient complain of muscular cramps. Other than that, spontaneous fractures. Now, fractures occur usually in the spine. Radiological examination. You will notice that the X-ray of a patient is of very poor quality. Why of a poor quality? Because there is a less amount of calcium, less amount of mineralization of the bone, less amount of mineralization of the osteoid. So, there is a lack of mineralization which gives a very... Uh, are glass or glossy appearance. There is a diffuse rare fraction of the bone. There are no well-defined clear-cut margins. Rather, there is a hazy appearance of the bone. Loser zone is a, or a pseudo fracture. It is a very important feature that is uh, seen in this condition. Occur due to the rapid resorption or slow mineralization which is mainly seen around the callus. Now, as you can see here, this is a region of a pubic rami where you will see that there is a haziness, sclerosis or a looser zone or a pseudo fracture. Now, it is also seen in the axillary border of the scapula. You will see that there is a, a, a zone which gives an appearance of a fracture, though it's not a very clear cut fracture. It's not a through and through fracture. It can be seen in the region of the uh, neck of the femur. It can also be seen in the ribs as you can see here. This is the pseudo fracture or a loser zone. A biopsy. Biopsy is mainly done for the confirmation of the di uh, diagnosis. It is done from the iliac crust and the characteristic histological finding is excessive uncalcified osteoid. Treatment. Osteomalacia occurs due to the effective intake or less intake of vitamin D. So vitamin D supplementation or vitamin D therapy is the treatment of choice. Now when we talk about the dietary supplementation of the vitamin D, you can see here the different sources of vitamin D. It can be a, a seafood, especially the fish tuna or salmon. Then we can have curd, cheese, liver, mushrooms, eggs. These are the sources of vitamin D. Other than that, high dose of calcium supplements. It may, be, it may take several months before any bone pain or muscle weakness gets relieved. So treatment duration is long. It might take several months for the conditions to settle down, for the features, clinical features to settle down. When you stop taking supplements uh, or do not take them regularly, the osteomalacia may return. So it's, it's mandatory. It's very important to keep on taking the supplements on and off. Open reduction and internal fixation is often associated with the fracture. So it is a treatment which is given to the patient suffering from osteomalacia when there are fractures.